RPGs have progressed in so many different directions since the classic turn-based days of yore, from action epics, sci-fi galaxy hopping adventures, and medieval stories of myth and mystery. The genre really has grown to encompass so many facets of gaming. However, classic turn-based RPGs will always have a special place in my heart, it is very rarely served these days. Luckily, Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes is here to fill that gap. From the legendary creator of the Sukaden series, Yoshitaka Mariyama, Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes is a classic style RPG that will see you taking control of a large variety of characters to fight your way through a plethora of enemies and solve puzzles to unravel the mystery of this world. You play as Noah, a new member of the Watch guarding the League of Nations. As a new member, you are tasked with assisting the neighbouring Imperial Empire in a joint venture to locate the Prime Lens, a mystical artifact said to focus magical powers. Unsurprisingly, things don't go as planned and you'll have to enlist allies from across the land to help to fight for your country and rebuild your nation. Story-wise, this has been a pretty interesting affair, leaning more into the Game of Thrones style power plays and politics than a Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy mystical epic. While this could come across as a little dull, I think the writing here is what elevates the game beyond the premise itself. All of the characters for the most part are brilliantly voice acted to truly bring you into the story with only the world's standard NPCs not getting this treatment. Being able to switch off and just enjoy the story unfold with brilliant performances from all the voice actors is a great way to experience this game. Make sure to switch on auto text and let it play out naturally in front of you. That's not to say you won't have things to do. The world of a Euden Chronicle is as vast as it is gorgeous. 3D worlds are combined beautifully with the 2D character models to create a unique graphical experience to explore. I love this combination of 2D and 3D to give the game a unique flair while also harking back to the classic PlayStation era of RPGs. Each area feels unique, from the hidden temples, rundown castles, mystic forests, seaside towns and more. Each area has its own unique feel to it that also holds many of the 100 heroes, that will have you scouring every section to uncover them all. Yes, there are actually 100 heroes to find. The 2D character designs are gorgeous too, with each character having unique designs and animations to make them feel unique. I was initially worried that when I first learned of 100 different characters you could play as, that they would all be similar cookie cutter versions of similar archetypes, Aurea, Mage, Peeler, etc. But so far, each of the characters, while having certain similar movesets, all feel unique enough to feel like no matter which combination you choose, you will always have an interesting new squad to fight as. Talking of fighting, let's talk about the gameplay. As mentioned previously, the game definitely leans into the classic PlayStation era JRPGs I grew up on, with hack and slash combat thrown out the window for a more structured turn-based affair. Each round of combat lets you select which attacks and abilities each of your six main parties want to use, with the barrel on the top of the screen telling you which order they will go in. With this, you can strategize which enemies you want to take on and with who, or you can plan to buff your allies and restore their health before they run in for the attack. As you play and build up relationships with certain characters, you'll be able to pull off combination attacks that will use up skill points to do massive damage to enemies. For the simpler battles, there's also an auto option that will let your team pull off moves automatically so you can just sit back and watch the chaos unfold. These auto attacks are controlled by a Final Fantasy XII style gambit system that will tell each character what to do based on the conditions of the fight. Maybe you want your healer running constant buffs and heals to the party from the backline, or your tanks are wailing on the enemies at the front. This can all be controlled by these options. Personally, I haven't tested out too many of these options, with me preferring to just leave the defaults in place and switch to manual moves whenever the need arises. However, if you want it to bump the game's difficulty to hard, I could see these being more important as the game progresses. Speaking of difficulty, one of the issues I had with the game is the difficulty spikes in both combat and some of the puzzles. I'm not new to RPGs, so when I spend my entire time sailing through enemies on a normal difficulty, then hit a brick wall with a boss encounter that took more than a couple of times to defeat, it was definitely frustrating to say the least. Same with the puzzles. Mostly the puzzles were relatively simple to solve, with a few simple button presses here and there, until I once again hit a proverbial wall that took way too long, and all my supplies due to the random battles I had to keep fighting to figure out. Luckily, these moments have been relatively few and far between. I know game balance patches should be out by launch, so hopefully these issues are resolved when you get to play. There's also a lot of backtracking throughout my time so far, with certain heroes wanting items that were only available from areas I previously visited or wouldn't talk to me until I was a certain level. This definitely felt like a cumbersome way of handling this that had me auto-fighting my way through areas I'd already been just to get a character. While I don't feel right giving this a final score at the moment as I'm only about 20 hours in, if things keep progressing as they have been, I could see me settling on an 8. The world is gorgeous and the combat feels fun, with a huge variety of characters all fully voice acted to let you pick and choose your perfect squad to save the nation. However, the inconsistent difficulty spikes and backtracking definitely slowed down my progression rather than adding to my enjoyment with this game. If you're a classic JRPG fan however, there is a ton here in this love letter to the PS1 era of RPGs. This game is available now on Xbox, PC, Switch and on Game Pass. Until next time, happy gaming.